Studied already chapter 5 verses 1 through to 48 and now we come to chapter 6 I want to remind you as we've been studying from chapter 5 and then you look at verse 20 it says for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven here is the king and he's talking to us of the king in Matthew you have the king in chapter 1 the king is revealed and then in chapter 2 you have the king already resisted because you see Herod wanted to kill the king and then you have the king rejected by the whole nation and then eventually now you have the king and he's telling us the responsibilities of the kingdom of the kingdom citizens and that's why he tells us in Matthew chapter 5 it says if you're going to be in the kingdom this is the declaration of the king and then he says your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees that already implies the Pharisees and the scribes, although they were religious, they were not citizens of the kingdom. If anybody is going to be in the kingdom and stay in the kingdom and remain in the kingdom, he must have his righteousness exceeding, going beyond, higher and deeper, broader and greater than the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. What's the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees? External righteousness. And you see that limit because in verses 21 to 48, it begins to tell us the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Thou shalt not murder. That's where it is taught. But I tell you, you not even get angry with your brother. And if you're angry with your brother, you go to reconcile with him. When you bring your gift to the altar and there you remember. That your brother has ought against you. If your righteousness is going to be greater than the right than the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, you'll not just go ahead offering any kind of offering. You reconcile therein is righteousness, exceeding, going beyond the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And then he said, You have heard that shall not commit adultery. And the Pharisees only limited that to external affair. Which is what many people say today. They will say, I didn't go into the real act. But you are still guilty because Jesus Christ said, if you look on a woman to lust after her in your heart, you see it's a matter of the heart. We say the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. That if you look on a woman to lost her time in your heart, you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. You are guilty in the sight of the Lord. You must be cleansed. You must be converted. There must be a change if you're going to be in the kingdom. And then it says you've heard that when you want to put away your wife for any reason, all you have to do is to give a right to by divorcement. But I say unto you that you stay together because in the beginning, he made them male and female. And for this cause he said, Man shall leave father and mother and shall cleave together. They shall join together what God has put together. Let no man put asunder. And then he says, Have you not heard? You'll forswear yourself. Or thou shalt not forswear thyself, but perform thine oaths unto the Lord. But I say unto you, swear not at all. Not when you are playing, not when you are joking, not when you are serious. Any time. In the court or your home with your friend anywhere swear not at all 
not by Jerusalem, not by the earth, not by heaven, not by the throne of God. And then it says, have you not heard an eye for an eye? And it's two for a two, a two. Retaliation, the principle of the world, the action of the world, the practice of the world. Hit him, he hits you. Touch him, he touches you. Insult him, he will insult you back. Eye for eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, here is the righteous standard of the kingdom. You see, getting into the kingdom of God is not child's play. Getting into the kingdom of God is not just, you know, you just come to church and read the Bible and live anyhow without conversion, without salvation, without righteousness, without sanctification, without holiness, and then just find yourself in heaven. It doesn't happen that way. It says if you're going to get there, your righteousness will be higher and deeper than the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And therefore he says, he tells us very clearly that he receives not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now you have heard, it has been said, you love your neighbor. You love your neighbor and then you hate your enemy. He says, no, no. That's how the Pharisees are prayed. That's how the scribes are prayed. That's why the door of the kingdom is shut against them. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And persecute and pray for them with this pathfully use you and persecute you. And then finally, it says, you know what it requires to get you into the kingdom? Be therefore perfect. You want to get you into the kingdom and stay in the kingdom. You want to live everlasting life in the kingdom. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Now, he wants to bring out, he's been talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. He now wants to show us their practice. Why is it their righteousness is unacceptable in the sight of God? He wants to show us why they do what they do. Their motive, their desire, their ambition, imagination, the sin within them that colors their actions, stains their actions, defiles their actions, corrupts them so much that even the good, good things they try to do is all staged with one thing. And it's captured in that one word, hypocrisy. And as he looks at the practices of the scribes and Pharisees, he was trying to tell his own disciples. He says, you know, to get you in the kingdom is the matter of the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Pure in heart. And there is anything that disqualifies the scribes and the Pharisees, it's the impurity of their heart, the impurity of their motive, the impurity of their desires. That's why now it brings it out very clearly. That brings us to Matthew chapter 6. Take heed in verse 1. That ye do not your arms before men, to be seen of men, to be seen of men. Uh, that was the whole program and project of the scribes and the Pharisees. Everything they did, it was to catch man's attention. Everything they did was to be seen of men. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, Disciples, believers, citizens of the kingdom, those who have a desire to get to the kingdom of God, take heed. That ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine arm, do not sound a trumpet before thee. As the, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. That they may have glory of men. The praise of men. That, that was their whole motive. That was their whole ambition. That was their whole dream, desire, just to have the praise and the glory of men. Very less unto you. They have their reward here on earth. They will not get to heaven. In verse 3, but when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand 
doers. Don't call it party. And then say, you know, I'm doing something good. Come and watch me do it. Come and see me. The good thing, the great things I do. It says, don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That thine arms may be in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. You know what the Lord is doing? He's correcting the false interpretation of the required righteousness and is revealing the righteousness of the heart obtained by faith in Christ necessary if we're going to be citizens of the kingdom in chapter 6 is now exposing the false practice of the self-righteous scribes and Pharisees and is teaching us the true righteousness that pleases God our heavenly father True righteousness, the righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees will only aim at doing all things only to the glory of God. Your only goal, your only ambition, your only desire is that you will find, you will seek the glory of God. The desire of the righteous is not to seek the praise of men. Examine what you do. Is it to seek the praise of men? Examine what you give. Is it to seek the recognition of men? Examine your acts and your actions. Is it to seek recognition and praise and glory and reward from men? Examine all those good, good deeds that you do. Do you do them when no eyes are watching, when no ears are listening, and when nobody is paying attention? Or do you do it to attract men's attention? Your mind is on men. Your heart is on men. Your desires are on men. And you don't think of God. God is not in your thoughts. If God is not in your thought, and every time you're doing something, you're wondering, do they know this? Do they recognize this? Do they see me? Do they praise me? Do they glorify me? Do they appreciate me? If that is your goal, they become your God. The people you want to impress, the people you want to attract, the people you want their praise, the people you want their recognition, they are the people you serve. The people you want their recognition. The people that I'm doing this, so and so may hear, so and so may see. That's your God. But if the God of heaven, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of the heavens and the earth, if he is your target, your goal, your focus, and he is the one you want to please, then everything you do, you say, how does God value this? How does God see this? How does God appreciate this? The only glory you seek is the glory of God. Such acts of righteousness that to seek the glory of God will begin with God, will end with God, will have God in view so that God will be your reward. And the old chapter, if you look at chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, let me show you some verses. You'll find out that everything focuses on God. He wants us to direct our attention, our focus onto God. Look at chapter, chapter 6 and verse 4. It says that thine arms may be in secret, that thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Look at verse 6. That but thou, when thou prayest in time to thy closet, and when thou shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Look at verse 18. That thou appear not unto men to fast. But unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father which saith in secret, shall reward thee openly. The whole concentration is on God. It says in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't seek your own kingdom, your own empire, your own glory, your own ambition, your own fulfillment, your own satisfaction. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, and all these things shall be added unto you. If there's anything that disqualified the Pharisees from entering into the kingdom of God, it was that they were seeking the praise of men, the recognition of men. Look at John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, reading from verse 43. John chapter 12, reading from verse 43. Here it says, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. 
they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You must be asking yourself now, why do you do what you do in the church? They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Why do you do what you do to your neighbors? They love the praise of men more than they love the praise of God. Why don't you do good when nobody is watching? Why don't you just send out yourself into helping people be righteous when nobody is watching? When nobody is going to mark your paper to say, that is fine, that is wonderful. Why don't you do good when nobody is going to say, well done? Why don't you give all your effort, all your time, all your talent, all your, everything you've got, all your skill into doing something and doing it well when nobody is watching? What do you do good only when people are watching? What do you be, bring your best only when somebody is going to say, well done? Because they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Look at John chapter 5 verse 44. John chapter 5 verse 44. How can you believe which receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that cometh from God only. How can you believe? You hear a lot, you believe a little. You study a lot, you practice a little. You hear much, but you obey little. Why? Oh, because you're seeking the praise of men. And if there's nobody to appreciate and to praise and to honor and to glorify you, then the, what's the motivation for doing something good? They don't even recognize it. That's why it says, how can you believe when you receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? The Lord wants us as righteous people, sick people, sanctified people to seek only the praise of God. Only the praise of God. Second Corinthians chapter 10. In Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Reading from verse 18. The praise of God. The recognition of God only. For not he that commendeth himself is approved. But whom the Lord commendeth. That should be our goal. We come to this study, practical righteousness without hypocrisy. Practical righteousness without hypocrisy. We never the message the study tonight to three parts. Number one, the caution. Number two, the condemnation. Number three, the, commend, the compensation. Number one, caution against hypocritical righteousness. Caution against hypocritical righteousness. Number two, condemnation of hypocritical righteousness. This will appear to be righteous, but it's all hypocrisy. The root of the righteousness is hypocrisy. The covering of the righteousness, hypocrisy. And the very source of the righteousness is hypocrisy. There is condemnation for hypocritical righteousness. And now number three, compensation for heart righteousness. Or you might say, compensation for honesty in righteousness. Compensation for honesty in righteousness. Honest righteousness. Heart righteousness. The compensation, the reward that comes upon the people that everything they do, they seek only the glory of God. The recognition of God. All they want is to please the Lord. What a great, great compensation, commendation. And then reward will come to them. We come to number one. Caution against hypocritical righteousness. Let, let's come to this, uh, chapter 6 of Matthew again. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men. Take heed that ye do not your act of righteousness before men. 
Take heed that you do not do what you do, the good things you do, the good deeds you do. Take heed that you don't do it before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Look at verse 5. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. You see, that, that's the goal, that's the purpose, that they may be seen of men. Do you give out gifts? Why? That they may be seen of men. Why do you need to do it in such a way that they do not even know you are the one giving it? But you see the scribes and the Pharisees, that was their major goal. Human recognition. And the recognition of society, that's all they wanted. That they may be seen of men. And then it says, and very less, they have their reward. Look at verse 16. Moreover, when, thou fast, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. You see, whether it's praying or fasting or giving alms, doing some good deeds, all they wanted is that they wanted men to see them, know them, recognize them, appreciate them, praise them, exalt them, lift them up. Look at Matthew chapter 23 verse 5. Matthew 23 verse 5. But all their works, notice that, all their works they do for to be seen of men. All their works they do to be seen of men. Check up your own heart. Check up your own life. Yes, we all do good things. There's nobody here that has not done something good sometimes. But why do you do those good things? That's the question. Is it to impress people? Is it to make people say, that man is a good man you know? Is it to have recommendation? Why do you give the things you give to the people you give them? Is it because they'll be able to recommend you after they've recognized you? That's a Pharisee. That's a Sadducee. But when you're a real child of God, you do good just to do good. That's your nature. You love it. Whether people see it or not, that's just not your concern. But you see these Pharisees, all they did, all their works, they did to be seen of men. And then we're told in Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 12 verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people in so much that they trudged up one upon another he began to say unto his disciples first of all beware ye of the leaven of the pharisees which is hypocrisy what's hypocrisy pretense what's hypocrisy i service was hypocrisy professing to be who we are not so we can have a good kind of appreciation from people and jesus said beware of the leaven of the scribes and the pharisees which is hypocrisy luke chapter 16 verse 15 in luke chapter 16 verse 15 he said unto them ye are they which justify yourselves before men that, that was their full-time activity. Everywhere they go, how am I? Am I doing well? Am I nice? Let me tell you what I do. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I don't do this. I don't do this. Now, make a conclusion. Tell me, how am I? Am I good? That was all their project. Going about to seek the recognition of men. Every good thing they did, they spoiled it by the hypocrisy. Every good thing they did, they spoiled it and they stained it and they corrupted it because of the show. It was for show. It was for public recognition. It was to make people say, yes, that's right. Yes, that's good. Yes, you are fine. But look at that verse 15 again. Yeah, they, we justify yourselves before men. 
you justify yourselves before me, but God knows your heart. Didn't I tell you the art of the matter is the matter of the heart? God is looking at the heart. He's looking at your intention, not just your action. He's looking at your motive. He's looking at the reason you do what you do. And if your motive is wrong, if your motivation is wrong, if your desires are wrong, if the source of the action is wrong, if the internal source is wrong, whatever comes out, whatever it is, is going to be wrong in the sight of God. God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. And let me show you an example. Second Kings chapter 10. Second Kings chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 16, then I'll jump down to verse 31. Second Kings chapter 10, verse 16. And he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. You can tell. He wanted somebody to come and see. It's like, actually, the word hypocrisy is uh, taken from the theater arts of those days. The people that were just actors in the theater. And then the spectators will come. You tell me, all those uh, people that act in the theater, what if there were no spectators? They will not do what they do. All those people that play games on the, on, on the field. I think about football or what they call soccer in other places. And then you have all this team on. And then look at all the seats around the stadium. And what they were expecting about 50,000, about, uh, about uh, maybe about 60,000 in the stadium. And you only have a sprinkling of people. You have about 20 people sitting on there. They will not play. They will, not, they will not put all their energy and all their skill into what they are doing. Because they look around the stadium and see they have only 20 people instead of the 50,000 people that should come and watch them. And therefore they will not give their best because they are actors. And that's they're from the world, from the Greek, it was taken from, hypocrisy is taken from that. That the people, they just want you to watch them. They want you to see them. They want you to recognize them. And, every, and if you don't recognize them, they either get angry. If you don't watch them and glue your eyes on them and show that and, and be smiling and be clapping, applauding them, then they, they get discouraged like actors, hypocrites, hypocrisy. And then you find Jehu here, he's telling another person, he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. But look at verse 31. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord, of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. It was only for show, only for demonstration, only for the theater, only for drama. It wasn't for real. That's the problem of the hypocrites. That's the problem of the people that do not have a sincere heart to follow the Lord. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. And uh, that, that's the problem of many people today. Because there's no genuine salvation. Because there's no genuine conversion. And because there's no genuine heart experience of holiness and sanctification. Therefore, everything is just, you know, to impress people. Isaiah chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 13. Isaiah 29. And I'm reading to you from verse 13. It says, wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near to me, they draw near to me with their mouth, and with their leaves do they honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. You see what God is looking for? He's looking for the heart. It's not just your lips. It's not just your mouth. It's not just your words. That's just empty air coming out of you. If the heart is not there, if your mind is not there, if your inward devotion is not there, if it's all just words, that's what God said, these people draw near unto me. With their mouth and with their lips do they honor me, but I've removed their heart far from me. 
and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Warn to them. They seek to hide their counsel from the Lord. They seek to hide the real intention. The real purpose. The real goal. The real ambition. They seek to hide it from the Lord. Well, then the Lord is cautioning us that our motive, our desire to be seen of men and to be praised by men spoils everything we do. Merely being seen of men is not the issue. People can see you, but if that's not your intention, if that's not your desire, you can still go ahead and do what you need to do. There is no reward from God for those who seek the praise and the recognition of men. Take that, understand that. Everything you do to the preaching of the gospel, and the praying in the church and outside the church. And the giving things to people to help them. And the philanthropic work that you do. The generosity of your life. If it is to seek the praise of men, they will see how nice I am. How good I am. How competent I am. How generous I am. How philanthropic I am. I give to the good of the society. If that's all you want, that they recognize you. It has no recognition by God. God knows all things. He does not only see the actions of men. He sees the motives and the desires too. That's why we're told that nothing is hidden from the eyes of the Lord. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And therefore he wants us to, uh, to think about what to do. We can, only be, we can only judge and examine our own hearts and make sure that our motives, our desires are right and acceptable before the Lord. Look at Mark chapter 7 verse 6. Mark chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 6. And you'll see what the Lord is emphasizing. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 6. It says, he answered and said unto them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. And to start with, do you see how direct the Lord Jesus was? Why was he so direct? He wasn't seeking the praise of men. You know, as a preacher, if you're seeking the praise of the people you're preaching to, you'll say what they want to hear. Who wants to hear that he's a hypocrite? And the Pharisees didn't want to hear, of course, that Jesus will tell them, you're hypocrites. Nobody wants to hear that. And when you don't say what people don't want to hear, uh, number one, that's the fear of man. Number two, you, you, don't, you don't value their soul. You're not telling them the truth that will help them to reshape and to return and to repent and to be converted. You only want to just make them happy now. Which means yourself, the preacher, you're seeking the praise of men. You cannot tell the person, look at this. This is wrong. And this is going to lead you to everlasting bodies in the lake of fire. But Jesus Christ, he wasn't seeking their praise. If he wanted their praise, he wouldn't talk the way he was talking. That's why he said, well, as I has spoken of you, hypocrites. As it is written, these people honoreth me with their leaves, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the traditions of men, as the washing of the pots and the cups and many other such things, such like things ye do. I pray God will deliver us from hypocrisy. Give me a good day. Amen. amen. We come to point number two now, the condemnation. This is serious. Contem condemnation of hypocritical righteousness. Uh, you know, when, when somebody says he has righteousness, uh, you need to find out what kind of righteousness. There's self-righteousness. There's hypocritical righteousness. But there is righteousness of faith. That you recognize you are a sinner. 
And that no matter what you do, by the deeds of your hand and by the deeds of the Lord, can no man be justified. And you feel condemned in the sight of the Lord. And you say, All my righteousness, then I feel the rags. And therefore, I come to you, Lord, you are the only righteous one. And you turn away from your sin. And you look at the blood of Jesus by faith flowing from Calvary to cleanse you, to put you, and to wash you. And then to wash all your sins away, to turn you around and make you a righteous person. That righteousness that comes from God as a gift. And now you're able to live a righteous life. That's the righteousness that counts. The righteousness that matters. But the people that hold on to self-righteousness. The people that hold on to hypocritical righteousness. That righteousness will not see you through to the gates of heaven. Will only lead you to the, to the depths of hell. In Matthew chapter 6, I'm looking at verse 2. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. You wonder, why would they sound a trumpet before them? If you go back to the Old Testament, uh, don't open, I'll just tell you. In Numbers chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, whenever the children of Israel wanted to gather people together, they put a trumpet to their mouth, and then they blow. If they blow once, it look, they, they're looking about the kind of congregation they want. If they blow twice, then it's another kind of attention they want. If they blow three times, then it's another kind of audience they want. And these Pharisees, it, so to say, they'll put a trumpet in their mouth. They'll stand at the corner of a street. And then they'll be at the corner of a synagogue. And then they'll blow the trumpet. And all the Israelites realize, whenever you blew the trumpet like that, you want people to gather. And then the people will gather. If they didn't have enough crowd to see what they were going to do, they'll blow the trumpet again. That's where we get the, uh, where we get the uh, phrase or the, or, the, or the proverb that you do not blow your own trumpet. It's not talking of this literal, literal prophet, uh, trumpets here. It's talking about calling attention to yourself, talking about your good deeds, and attracting the glory and the praise of men. Don't blow your own trumpets. That's why we got that. And in this Matthew chapter 6, it says, Thou, when thou doest arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. I were told in Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 6. Everybody's speaking of themselves, blowing their own trumpets. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. That's blowing your trumpet. I'm good. I'm great. I'm generous. I do this, I do that. Didn't you hear? Uh, the one that, you know, helped the other fellow. I'm the one that gave them the clothes they are wearing. Oh, you know, when so and so is passing by, look at the shoes in his feet. I'm the one that bought that for him. Everyone, will, it says, will proclaim his goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And the Lord is telling us not to do that, not to seek your own glory. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. For all seek their own. All seek their own, and not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Else the mark they were not born again. And as the mark you are not born again, if all you're seeking is recognition, is the glory of men, is the praise of men. How do we know you're seeking the praise of men? Because whenever the praise does not come, you get angry. You get frustrated. Whenever people do not glorify you, appreciate you, lift you up, exalt you, whenever the praise you are looking for does not come, you get discouraged and frustrated and unhappy. And that's why it says, for all seek their own and not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Hey, let's look at Jeremiah. What Jeremiah is telling us in chapter 45. 
verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 45, verse 5. And seekest thou great things for thyself? Are you seeking great recognition, great attention, praise for yourself? Seek them not. Seek them not. You see, if you do that, it means that really you're not interested in the Lord. All you're interested in will just be that, you know, I want people to recognize me. And if you look at your notes, it says, Hypocrisy stains and corrupts and destroys every good thing it touches. Hypocrisy turns some giving to fill the rags. Hypocrisy turns your praying, your fasting into fill the rags. Hypocrisy turns your good works and your supposed love into fill the rags. Hypocrisy turns your righteousness and holiness, zeal, consecration into fill the rags. Any good things you think you have, any good quality you think you have, any good action you think you project, hypocrisy turns everything into fill the rags. By the way, what's hypocrisy? What's hypocrisy? And let's look at Matthew chapter 23 verse 14. You see a word there that describes hypocrisy. Matthew chapter 23 verse 14. One to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for ye pretense. That's the word. For ye pretense. Make long prayer. Hypocrisy and pretense, they're the same. For a person pretending, that's hypocrisy. Look at verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Hypocrisy is iniquity. Where you hide a bad thing inside. A negative thing inside. A corrupt thing inside. And then you polish the outside to make people think. You're righteous, you're good. That's hypocrisy. And let's look at Matthew chapter 23, verse 5. In verse 5 it says, For all their works do they do to be seen of men. That's hypocrisy. When everything you do, you'll wait on the people can see you before you do it. There is a need. You will not meet that need if nobody will know. They must know the person that is doing well, that is doing good, the fellow that is responsible for helping people. If nobody will, know, will not know, you will not do it. That's hypocrisy. It's only when people gather and they will see it. And they will know it. And they will know, I am the one doing this great, good thing. Then, that's the, then you jump into action. That's hypocrisy. In that same Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. One to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. When you major in the minor, when you concentrate on little, little, little things, and then the weightier matters you overlook. You know, there are people that you know, they're very meticulous about wearing a scarf. That's all right to wear a scarf. But when you concentrate on, I put on my scarf, but there's anger in your heart. You don't deal with that. Which one is more serious? There's no love in the heart, there's no salvation in the heart. And all you just carry about is, I wear a scarf. I cannot go out without my scarf. <laughs> Good luck to you. You major in the minor. That's hypocrisy. That's why Jesus said, want to use scribes and Pharisees. Because you pay tithes of honest. It's even little, little vegetable. They'll pay tithes. But then you meet the weightier matters of the Lord. Judgment and mercy and faith. When you meet those weightier things, those important things, you don't care about the weighty things, the important things, and then the minor, minor things about physical appearance, where you put the whole weight of Christianity. That's hypocrisy. Hey, look at verse 25. One to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye may clean the outside of the cup, and of the platter, but within ye are full of extortion and excess. When the outward is polished and clean, because that's what people will see. Your relationship outside, 
you take care of that very well but inside in your house with your wife and your children with your with your husband and your children you're like a lion it's hard to live with you but outside you smile you look nice you are great in human relations on the outside that's hypocrisy when you polish the outside and everything looks nice on the outside but inwardly ravening wolves that's hypocrisy and now in verse 27 want to use scribes and pharisees hypocrites but ye are like unto white sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outward which indeed appear beautiful outward but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness that's hypocrisy it tells us in uh, Mark, in Mark chapter, Mark chapter 12, I need to show you something here. Mark chapter 12, I'm reading to you from verse 13 to verse 15. Mark chapter 12, verse 13. And he sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. To catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, isn't that hypocrisy? When they gave honor to the Lord, and yet they only came to tempt him. That's hypocrisy. When you say you, you're seeking for advice, but you're trying to put the advice out, they come suddenly into trouble. Your real intention is to get me to trouble. But you say, Master, I come to seek some advice from you. What should we do? That's hypocrisy. Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man. That's the truth. Jesus was the truth. And he cared for no man. For thou regardest not the person of men. That's true. And teachest the way of God in truth. That's the truth. You know you can say the truth, but if your heart is not right, you're still an hypocrite. Because you see, all, the, all that these people said, everything was true. They called him master. Yes, he was master. We know that thou art true. That's the truth. And carest for no man. You have no